today's video, we are making over my guest room. Are you ready? Do you know what love means? This is insane. You're saying things I can't explain. I know where your heart is. Hey everyone, welcome to Mama From Scratch. My name is Emily if you are new and I hope you're having a beautiful day so far. Today we are working on another DIY room makeover and as I said, it's for the guest room and I'm really excited to finally tackle this space. It has been very blah and boring and just filled with lots of junk. I basically, it's our catch-all space and I'm really trying to not make it that. So I feel like if I make it over, it's bound to stay clean, right? Hopefully so. Um, today I'm actually going to be sharing with you how to do a beautiful wall paneling treatment on your walls. Um, this is something I've actually been wanting to do for months and I thought about doing it for the entryway but instead I did a board and batten treatment. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it linked down below. It's super easy and affordable. This is also really affordable as well. I went through a couple different designs of what I wanted to do and in the end I decided to uh, settle on this and I think you guys are really going to like it. It's very approachable, it's easy, and it doesn't take too much time and I'm really excited we're gonna be trying something really different with the paint color in here I'm going kind of bold I'm a little bit nervous about it but it's always good to challenge yourself with design I feel like and what better space to do it than a guest room right um, so I hope you guys are excited for today's video if you are give it a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button I got lots of DIYs and decorating and makeovers to continue to share with you um, I got lots planned for the summer and hopefully you guys will enjoy it all so with that let's go ahead and get started so for the wall paneling I ended up getting all of my trim board at Lowe's and I got 10 foot boards because I have nine foot ceilings and that way I would be able to get an L shape out of each of the boards without having too much waste and each board gave me about six inches of waste which was pretty good I'm very really happy about that so just take that into account when you're designing your space and I'm actually going to be creating four upper panels and two lower panels and I had enough by just buying eight boards which I was super stoked about at first I thought I shorted myself but I did not so I was like yay I can do this I'm not doing any lower panels in um, because that's gonna be behind the bed so why waste the supplies if eventually we take a bed out of here then I will add that but for now we don't need that the next step is to cut your boards and you're gonna to want to set your chop saw at 45 degree angle and you can just leave it in one spot and you're going to want to make sure that when you cut each of your boards that when you're finished each board is basically the angles are the same direction if that makes sense so the top angles will be out and the inner angles will be inward so you're creating a v shape hopefully that makes sense to you all your boards should be the same because you're basically going to be making a picture frame with all the boards for this wall paneling treatment again you can decide what um, style you want for wall paneling but this is what i'm going with so i got all my boards cut and again it was really easy to do. It took me about 20 minutes to cut everything up, so I'm really happy with that. So let me go ahead and show you all the supplies I'm going to be using to put the panels up on the wall, and then we'll get started. I need a level, a brad nailer, um, brad nails. I'm using an inch to inch and a fourth, depending on the thickness of your material. My material is only a fourth inch thick, so this is what I'm using. So if you're using thicker, adjust to safety glasses, a measuring tape, and then I have paintable silicone. That's very important that you get paintable one. This one's great, dries in 20 minutes. Then I have some caulking, or you could use wood filler. This is for the joints and all the nail holes. And then you're going to want to sand everything down, so some fine grit sandpaper. And then you're gonna to wanna to clean everything up. And I'm gonna be using my Hoover One Power Cordless Blade Vacuum. I wanna thank them for sponsoring today's video, and I'll share more about them later on. I'm gonna be using a paintbrush, a roller, and of course, you're gonna need paint for this if you're gonna be painting the wall. The most important supply are your trim boards. I have three different sizes, small at 22, 24 inch, and then I have 63 inch. You'll notice that all the boards are the, cut the exact same way. So the outer corner is outward on both sides, and that's very important. I have four small boards, 10 medium boards, and then I have eight extra long boards. So depending on the size of your paneling, you're gonna adjust and go from there. Each of my panels is going to be six inches apart. So my center point is 67 and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure three inches out from that on each side. And then that is gonna give me my starting point for the outer part of each of my panels. 
got my nails in here. It's ready to go. I'm really excited to use this. I got it for Mother's Day and it's just going to be a game changer because it's cordless. Anything cordless is just whew, 10 times better because it's much quieter and you don't have to worry about cords or lugging something heavy around like the compressor. So. When you're putting up your wall panels, the lower part of your board needs to be on the inner part, like the inside, okay? The, uh, the longest part goes on the outside. You don't have to do this. This is optional, but I'm adding just a little bead of silicone on the back of each of my boards. I'm taking my level, putting that on the wall, making sure it's six inches from the top, making sure the board's level, and then I will add a couple nails into each board about a foot apart. And then I'm going to work my way all the way around, basically making a rectangle box. Something else I did was the top of the long boards. I did not add the nail till the very end. That way if I needed to adjust it so that the top one would fit, I could. Now, when I added this second box on and every box after that, I put the first board up on the wall and I made sure it was level using the bottom of the original box. It was easier to do that than try to reach all the way up to the ceiling and it worked great. I ended up going, instead of six inches, I ended up doing seven. Oops. But that's okay. You know, it happens. At least they're all the same distance apart. So that's all that matters. Been on a roller coaster going down, but I never felt this high. Biggest ride of the century. Just like all the other boxes, I'm making sure I'm measuring down seven inches, even though it was supposed to be six, and then making sure it's level using the other box as a guide, and then I'm just nailing it to the wall and repeating that for all the sides. Another fun and messy part begins is adding a spackle or wood filler to all the nail holes and then adding your silicone um, that's paintable to the, each side of the trim boards. Now that I'm done with the spackle, now I'm going to go in with the uh, paintable silicone and it's best when you do this to cut the tip of it at an angle just like the boards um, these will go on so much smoother and then you're just going to want like a, na a wet napkin to go down it with your finger a wet finger um, just makes it nice and clean and step in this wall paneling treatment is to sand all the um, nail holes and cracks down that we backfilled. Um, you want to make sure that when you actually do fill them with the spackle or wood filler that you leave it um, kind of raised up a bit. That way you can smooth it down a nice smooth surface. Um, you don't want it to be indented because you're going to see that once you paint it. So you want it nice and smooth. That took me about five minutes to sand, not bad at all, but now is the cleanup. You can see how dirty I am, white powder dust all over the wall and the floor. So we are gonna get our cordless Hoover blade vacuum and clean it all up. I'm just going to attach the crevice tool, that way I can start vacuuming up all of that fine sanding dust off of the wall and the wall panels, and this works really easy. There's also another attachment for upholstery that you can use, and just for regular dusting, but this has such amazing suction. I love it for cleaning and dusting the house because it actually cleans up the mess for you, as you can see here. 
This vacuum may be cordless, but let me tell you, the suction on it is amazing, as well as the price because starting Monday, you can get this vacuum for $160 because Hoover is having a statewide sale on hoover.com. So definitely be sure to check them out. I'll have them all linked down in the description box below. I have had this vacuum for months and it has been such a joy to use and it actually cleans the house. When you turn this on, you know it's going to suck up everything that you put it in front of, which is a must if you're gonna be vacuuming your house. If you've never had a cordless vacuum, you definitely should try the Hoover Blade one. It is a game changer. It's so convenient. You can take it anywhere to clean up any mess. You can take it traveling with you too in the car. So whatever the mess is, Hoover will clean it for you. So now I'm just taking a rag and wiping down the entire wall, making sure I get all the sanding dust, make sure there's no little bits of cobwebs or anything on there because we're gonna be painting this wall and you don't want any of that on there. Now that that is finished, I'm going to attach the long wand with the floor attachment and I'm gonna vacuum the floor, making sure I get all of the rest of the sanding dust off. Do you see how nice that light is? It's wonderful for noticing little particles on the floor like dust and hair because without it, you'd be surprised at how much you miss. It actually makes vacuuming fun. I know that sounds strange, but I promise you it does. And then you can attach the crevice tool to the long wand and go all around the ceilings, making it super easy and convenient for you to dust for cobwebs. You can see all of the stuff that I collected in the bin. It so be sure to check the description box below so you guys can get your Hoover Ready Blackium. I want to thank them again for sponsoring today's video and it's just nice to work with a company that I love and enjoy and that helps make my life cleaner and easier at the same time. So now it's time for painting. I am going bold, like I said, and I'm trying a color I have never tried before. It is called Iron Ore by Sherman Williams, but I had Home Depot color match it in their Bear Maquis paint. We barely started on every turn. Keep moving further and all of my broken bones meant with your Now, if you are doing wall paneling or board and batten, a paint sprayer is a great option. I just don't own one yet. I am planning on getting one, hopefully soon. Um, but if you have one, let me know some of your recommendations. I'd like to get a cordless one just because it's super convenient. But something that you should do is not only put down a drop cloth to prevent overspray, um, even with a roller, it happens. Also add some uh, painter's tape onto your trim that way you can get a nice fresh clean line. You don't have to worry about getting it particularly straight. You let the tape do it for you. I am also using a small roller to get into the smaller areas, just makes my life a little bit easier. And then I'm also using a paintbrush. This is definitely a must for your DIY tools to have. Um, this is a shorter brush, only two inch, but it's angled. Angled makes all the difference. Definitely get it, invest in it. Paint brushes can last you a long time as long as you clean them really well. And then I'm just going around each of the boxes, uh, making sure that it looks nice and seamless. All right, do you see this little spot here that it bled through the um, paints? I'm just gonna take a scraper 
and kind of loosen it up a little bit. Take a damp towel. Just watch, you're just gonna rub it. See how that cleaned that up? All right, it's all done. I am so happy with the color. It looks fantastic. I will say anytime you're painting, make sure you step away for a little bit and um, let your eyes rest and then come back in so you can see everything. And if you've missed anything, I had my kids do that. They came in to look at it and they're like, mommy, you missed a couple spots. So that was very helpful. We got that all touched up. I am debating whether or not I want to add this color to all the walls. Um, it'd be a little extreme, um, not extreme, but just bold. But I think I should sleep on it first and see what I want to do in the morning. So we're going to um, go from there. But as I sit back and look at this, I have decided to change my lighting choice and I'm really excited about it. I could go really contemporary and modern with this or I could go a little bit more traditional. And I've made my choice. Comment down below which one you think I'm going to do. Um, I'm excited. So, yeah. Although you might already know what it is by the time the thumbnail's up and everything. But, you know, hey, it's worth asking. Um, but what do you guys think of the color? I really like it. It's not a true black. This is more of a, like, a charcoal coal black, I guess, or a steel color. And I really like it. I'm very happy with it. At first, I was like, I don't think it's going to be dark enough. But it turned out beautifully. So... We're going to let this sit and then I'm going to clean up my mess and then we're going to get to um, decorating the room probably tomorrow. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at that time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time Met you on a A few days later, the rest of the furniture arrives. I'm just gonna put it all together. I'm really excited about this upholstered panel bed. I've never owned one before. I've always made all of our beds. So this was definitely fun to add to the guest room. probably wondering why I'm putting this together on top of the bed. Well, it's because this bed frame actually will work with an adjustable bed or a regular mattress. So it would fit around our bed, which was perfect. So we just put it together and then basically slid it over the bed and it fit beautifully. So now I'm going to start decorating the room with some new and old items. This is actually a, the duvet I used for our original guest room. So I'm repurposing that. And then I got these new shams. They are so beautiful. The linen on this is so soft and I love the color. I didn't expect it to match the wall when I ordered them and I was just kind of taking a chance and I love the way they look on the bed and just add that pop of contrast in the room. I absolutely love this duvet blanket. It has a faux fur side and then a regular linen side. And I really liked the way the linen looked with the rest of the uh, linen on the bed. And so I just kept it that way. It's beautiful blanket. I actually got it during Christmas time and it comes in a couple different colors. So of course I will leave everything linked down below for you so that you guys can get it for your home as well. And then I added this beautiful Target blanket on here. I just loved how it tied into the bed and just added another layer. Mm -hmm. 
So I ended up finding these really cute end tables at Lowe's and I just thought the color was really pretty. They come in actually a couple different colors, um, but the price was really good and I really liked the way they looked with the wall. Um, I wish that they were a tiny bit bigger, but it actually works really well for the space. It doesn't feel too cramped in there. And then I added this beautiful vase from Target along with a couple faux florals from Amazon and Target as well. For the lighting, I chose to do one small table lamp. I really liked this. I originally was going to do sconces on the wall that look like this, but they didn't arrive in time, so maybe I'll add those later on. But I decided to do a more modern looking chandelier and I really like the way this looks. It comes in a couple different colors. I decided to do the gold. I really into that kind of soft brassy color. And so I thought this would look really good and pop against the dark accent wall. Now for the curtains, I'm using these ones from Ikea, but Target has the same exact ones, so I'll link those down below. Now there's two different hooks you can use to get a higher end look for your curtains. Ikea sells one and also Amazon, so again, they'll be linked down below, but they're really easy to insert. You basically just take each of the prongs and loop it through on the back. You have to make sure though that you get curtains that allow for you to do this though, and also using curtain rings. If you get an inch rod, make sure to get an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half ring that way they actually go over the rod those all came from Amazon and I really like the way they look and something else I wanted to mention is most of the time people hang their curtain rods right at the edge of their window but to make your window look larger you extend it over to the side so I just found the nearest stud and then added that in and then I'm also steaming the curtains that way we get rid of all the wrinkles Here's a little overview of how the wall looks without any art. I think it's really beautiful and it's well balanced, but I thought it might be kind of nice to add a piece of art here so you can let me know if you're team art or no art for the wall. So I finished the room makeover, let me remind you of what it looked like when we started, and this is how it looks now. I sure hope you all enjoyed this DIY room makeover for my guest room. I absolutely love the way it's turned out and I hope I have given you lots of ideas on ways that you can update your home and decorate it. It was a fun challenge so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Please share it. It definitely helps my channel and hit that subscribe button. I got lots of DIYs, decorating, and room makeovers to come. As I said earlier, everything will be linked in the description box below, including the Hoover Blade Vacuum. Definitely get it while it's on sale. I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. Let me know what your favorite part of the room is, and I'll see you in the next one.